Hello and welcome to School Talks. I'm Purva and today we have with us Dhruv. Dhruv is the Vice President Marketing of Hackberry and he has a wealth of knowledge and practical expertise in integrating AI and technology in in the field of education. He's closely working with schools and collaborating with them to improve AI and technology in students and uh, educators. Hi Dhu, welcome to School Talks. How are you today? Hi Purva, thank you. Thank you for having me here. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> so, Dhu, I just wanted to ask you like what do you do as a VP of marketing and what is your company about? Tell us about Hackberry. Yeah, so um as a VP of marketing, so the point is this is a small company and I do everything from distributing the brochures to planning the entire marketing strategy for the company. Um so our main objective that the reason we are working in this company is that we believe that every child uh, should learn about technology as they pass out of the school they should know how things work the objective is not for them to become coders or programmers right. the objective is that they should know how things works for example you know um if they just clap and the ac switches off so how is that happening what is that so that's machine learning basically the machine has been taught to recognize claps so millions of samples of claps have been fed into the ac wow on the chip and that is why they understand if there's a clap they should switch off and if there are two claps maybe it should switch on so children should understand and not be amazed by technology sure. but they should understand how things work so, so as a person who's you know i'm so this whole technology is completely foreign to me and you know the work that you all are doing is so inspiring i mean children would just know now that you know what this is how it works and they won't be surprised right so how are you sort of working with schools and children and leaders to integrate technology and like you know teach them more about it how are you doing that i think that was a good question so what do we do in the schools um when we started this jolly 7 years back uh, we started with premium schools uh, we worked with you know schools like bombay international school fazlani academy we used to send our teachers teach children right. what is ai what is programming what is coding uh, but down the line we understood that these are very privileged schools and these are very privileged children and we thought that to create the real impact we should really work with uh, you know schools which are not so privileged right and so right now we work at three levels first is the student level where we teach them the foundations so ai is a buzzword you know um ai is almost like saying hey the ai is like the decoration on the cake if you think about cake uh, baking so it's more like a decoration on the cake how beautiful it looks the design and everything okay. but the foundation is how is the cake baked what, how do you really bake a cake what what are the ingredients what is the proportion all of those things and that is coding that is understanding how programming works right that is how to communicate with computers and ai is just on top of that right. okay so what we do right now with children level we work at these foundational levels basically understanding what is data uh what is programming how to work on that what is machine learning once they understand all of these things that is when they integrate ai with their programs right okay, so that is at the student level second is educators we believe that teachers more than anyone else should be on top of tech and they should know what's going on what are the tools for them they should be using a lot of tools to encourage children to do that so we do a lot of workshops in fact there is a series of workshop every month that we do specially for state board schools and also for all other schools uh on you know topics like how to start integrating coding in your com- normal computer class how right. to teach programming with games how to integrate ai in coding all of those things right. and the third level is the school leadership level so generally school leaders are extreme visionaries they indeed see what's coming in the next 10 years and most of them understand that tech is the future so they always integrate so we also do a lot of workshops seminars with tech leaders and school leaders on what should the mindset be what's going to come how can you do that in your school right that's what so dhruv you briefly mentioned that you know teachers should be on the top of uh, ai and technology yes. and everything right so you you said that you you been, you you have been doing workshops is there anything else apart from the workshops that any project that you want to share with us uh about the same i mean because you know it's often seen as technology is is sort of a challenge especially for teachers and educators right Correct. so what are you doing apart from just the workshops 
for teachers yeah teachers educators leaders mm-hmm. so our the entire journey in fact even what hackberry does it's it has a platform for teachers to teach coding okay. and programming so everything that we do is basically focusing on educators uh we do a lot of teacher training so right. one is for awareness which are workshops and these are small uh you know uh, snippets of what they can do in the school like for example we do a two hour workshop on how to use chat gpt in your class oh wow and how can you how can they use chat gpt to create lesson plans to create curriculum to create projects to get project ideas and that is a two hour topic but now there are so many schools for example we are working with don bosco school matu oh. and uh, they have five computer teachers and all of them wanted training so we decided that these are two teachers who would get trained on python so oh. they did not know the language but then we really deep dive into what they already know and then we do did a lot of teacher training so that they can teach python the essence of this and the core of this is that teacher should be curious so i've also met teachers which say that are sir ye to additional task hoga why are you putting this on us and at the other end there are teachers who are really curious so this person in don bosco uh, nelson sir he is almost 60 years of age and he's mm-hmm. more curious than you, you and me and he really wants to learn so many things now and he said i want to make so many projects for the school wow, and that is the terrible. attitude that we are talking about with teachers and with the such teachers we do teacher trainings we do workshops we do seminars with them in fact we do a lot of pedagogy training with them we do in class trainings with them and almost all integrations we give them uh, the entire platform if they really want to start teaching by themselves they can use the platform and teach we give them the curriculum we give them lesson plans so if the teacher has the right mindset then we have all the tools to support right uh, so earlier you mentioned the stages right hmm. Chil- uh, you you have a different a uh, sort of a uh, teaching for children different for teachers and different for school leaders correct so you said something about teaching technology and then like sort of um, you know going ahead towards Artist. ai something yes. for children right yes. would you want to build up a little bit more on that yeah i mean i think that's a wonderful point that you've picked up so um let me put it this way i gave the analogy of baking a cake right know. so similarly here ai is the buzzword right now so most of the schools that are talking to us right now is that can we teach ai to children right so the answer to this is at what level is the school right now so is the school right now at a very basic stage so let me continue this baking example um now decoration is one part the first level would be knowing the ingredients that hey this is flour this is butter this is water all those things second level would be i know how to make the make the recipe i know how to make the cake hmm. third is really making the cake fourth is really doing the decoration right. so here at what level are you so a lot of schools that we've also worked with are schools identifying what is flour and what is water and what is right butter so for example what is digital literacy so they are right now figuring out and teaching this is a mouse this is a keyboard and this is a computer and this is a cpu this is what a cpu does this is memory which is very important but now depends on where the school is if the school is at that stage then they would want to take one step ahead okay and directly teaching them decoration might not really help of course okay so now they need to teach them how to bake a cake which is how to integrate how to learn the language of computers which is coding okay so the foundation then is to teach them a couple of programming languages or having at least the mindset of how computers work right for example so there is a language called block based coding so there are two types of coding one is a no code coding okay. and then there is a text based coding no code coding means you don't have to really know any language to code right okay, there are blocks of codes and you can just pick up blocks put it in a good sequence that if i click this this should happen and these are two blocks and you integrated and that line of code would work for the children hmm. like developing games developing basic mobile applications or developing a small website hmm. they can do all of those things with no block no code platforms wow okay then there is a code based platform which is a text based platform so the schools which are at the level where they are just introducing how to bake the cake they should start with basically how to teach programming okay right. so basically introducing maybe at grade 3 and 4 just a basics of game development through a platform called scratch okay, okay. so scratch is like a universal platform schools in all over the world use scratch to introduce coding to children in a very okay. fun way okay then they can probably progress to something like a mobile app development where they start developing things like a calculator application 
or a to-do list or a weather application and right. then they progress to website development and then they learn python or any language of coding you know so this is like a journey that schools can follow wow and at one point of time when they understand that now children are understanding how technology works that's when ai should be brought in so that's the decoration that can come in for the cake you know so maybe in grade 6 grade 7 they can integrate ai so after a few sessions suppose they have developed an application so how can they integrate that application with ai for example right. <laughs> at the security of one of the schools they had developed a app to uh, the children had developed an app where they can basically take snapshots of everyone who's coming in the school you okay. know and just to register okay they integrated ai and basically machine learning part of ai where the camera also detected whether the person was with a mask or without a mask oh wow makes sense so yeah. so this was developed by the children so one basic application was just taking a snapshot of whoever was there or maybe registering the temperature of that person now they integrated a little bit of machine learning and they started detecting whether the person is with a mask or without a mask oh so nice. thousands and millions of samples of people with mask was fed to the device and thousands of samples of people without the mask was fed and now the device learned itself the machine learned to recognize someone with a mask or without a mask that is how you integrate that was beautifully explained roop thank you so much for that okay. also that brings me to this question uh, that you said that there are certain schools that they don't even know the flood the basic things and you need Correct. to start from there and then there are schools that children might hmm. you know they they might already know you know the flour and the butter Uh, so how are you approaching to this this whole you know difference and do you see it more often and what are the different uh, you know strategies that are in play when you are you know sort of starting from the scratch and starting from somewhere in the middle yeah no i like that you're getting the hang of it yeah. and you understanding how it works so good question again so how do i approach how do we approach different types of schools or different types of students you know basically students who really understand the basic part of it very well and they want to advance to the next level and there are schools and children who really want to learn about the basics first so yeah so the answer is yes we are it also depends on the types of schools so we are working right. with international schools right now where children are already exposed to a lot of coding they already know you know right. the basics that we are in any ways teaching in other schools so for there uh, we have special programs so um for example i'll give you an so if you already know about a little bit of coding and children know about that now ai is an application of coding okay so you know coding and now you apply it somewhere so one example can be ai in social media okay, okay. so how do you do that so suppose you have a channel on social media and you have thousands of comments on it now you can't really sit and read all the comments now but you really want to understand are they happy with my video are they not happy with my video are they all booing me or are they all encouraging me? Yeah. what is it so that's called sentiment analysis okay okay and children can actually develop uh, ai tools uh, so that it can read all the comments and give us a sentiment of all thousands of comments hmm. okay so you now you don't really need to read the comments you just do the sentiment analysis which is again an ai part of the coding Hmm. so which actually reads through all the comments and gives you the sentiment that you know uh, purva your channel is doing really great people are liking and they are giving suggestions for other videos right. or purva most of them are saying that you know your voice is not audible or your audio is not great right so you get that with a click of a button and don't really have to go through all of those things wow. and that is something that is taught in advanced level children who already know how coding work <laughs> okay and but at a basic level for example we are doing multiple schools in gujarat Uh, in the district of palanpur where uh, students are not so advanced and they don't have the exposure of all of these technology what are we doing there so we also translated to their own language so we translated to gujarati oh, and wow. we and we teach them developing very simple applications like there are two for example we go to the level of you know every mobile application or every software has two parts one is the design part what you see and one is the logic that if you do something something should happen So right. that's the logical part and we go to that level and start working with them at that level wow. that hey maybe chalo develop an application for a calculator app okay so how should the calculator look where should the digits be where should the digits be displayed right we show them the display and then the coding part of it that if someone clicks 2 and there is the multiply button here and 2 mm -hmm. then what should happen is coded 
and they learn it through block based coding wow that's that's so nice also a follow up question on that okay. Uh, so now this was the student part of it. Yeah. Are teachers involved in this learning process with children? And if they are, how are you training teachers for the same? Because this sounds a little complicated for yes. you know teachers who you know have been in that phase where they didn't know any technology and yes. didn't know any AI. From where they have to sort of you know know a little bit of about coding and AI and stuff like that. So I'll throw a bomb here. Uh, <laughs> what do you think? Uh, watch my background. So I'll. reveal it so i'm not a coder i'm not from a technology background What i'm a scientist saying? i'm a biotech student oh but the key here is curious so if the teacher is right. really curious and she wants to really learn or he wants to really learn this is something that can be learned within 6 months or a year wow. so what we do is uh, every time we go to a school they need not have a very in depth coding background they just need to be computer teachers who oh. understand the computers you know the okay. basics of computing and they know how to teach that's all that's needed and we do a teacher training plus they all get self paced modules where they can keep learning so suppose self paced modules self paced modules okay self paced elaborate on that please uh, you will learn at your own pace okay self paced, paced modules okay you know? okay so you learn at your own pace and the pace would be suppose there's a session on uh 101 of mobile app development today i can only do a pre read hmm. suppose i don't have that background i've gone through the training so i'll go through the concept before the class i'll go through the lesson plan before the class the lesson plan will exactly tell me what examples to give what questions oh. to ask and the supporting material would have all the steps to be done with the students so it's almost like hand holding for the teacher but the point is that they should be willing to take this next step right so a lot of teachers i've interacted with they are not so comfortable learning anything new oh okay. so it is challenging the only good point with students is they are always hungry and curious to learn right and with you know us adults the problem is that most of our cups are full and we are not really open to learning anything new and sometimes we face this with teachers also but 80% of teachers are very curious that you you know this is something that we learned during our graduate years right. and we would love to implement this so that and now this whole technology and ai it's getting better every day and you know these students from a young age they have exposure to it already so so you know it they, it it probably helps in making you know things a little bit better for them hmm. and they're growing more curious because everything around them it's just ai and technology and people yes. are just talking about it yes. right um so uh, dhruv i wanted to ask you that um how do these teachers i mean school leaders who are new in this space who are uh, you know trying to bring in technology and ai learning for children how do they just start if they are new in the space if this is a new school now it depends on what is the positioning of the school Right. um for example it's a state board school and they've been here since ages and they really want to bring in technology then they can start something like a coding program for the school that is one time second is bringing in uh, digital classrooms that is the second part of tech third is digital classrooms as in just um, you know have an av board and yes so that's right. the basic so okay. it helps in visualization so your right. basic core is that there are different types of learners and everything around technology in education is to help different types of learners in the best possible way of course so when i say different types of learners there is an audio learner a visual learner a kinesthetic learner okay someone who can just read and remember hmm. someone who can see and remember someone hmm. who can hear and remember and someone who does and remembers hmm. okay so the experience should be for all of them so in uh, ancient schools what the method is just read and hear but there is no visuals there is no kinesthetic there right. so digital classrooms help in at least the visual part of it where there is a lot of visualization there are a lot of diagrams a lot of uh, uh, images for the visual learners right now then the fourth part of it is uh, bringing in augmented reality hmm. what does that mean it means simulations so it's like okay. playing a game okay so if you really want to understand human anatomy and you know how does the heart really look you see a 2d picture in the on the page but in augmented reality you actually see a 3d diagram and right. you can actually see it from all different sides you know this is the art out uh, this is these are the ventricles right and you can actually sense that or it might not be possible for all students to really visit all countries right 
so they can simulate countries in the classroom and give them the experience of visiting different countries mm-hmm. so this is some part of technology that student uh, schools can start with most important is starting the teachers with technology for example introducing some tools like chat gpt mm. how to use chat gpt so there are very simple formula to start using chat gpt uh, to create lesson plans to create their cvs to create a uh, question papers right. mcqs all of those things so that is where schools should get started so dhruv uh, just going uh, on a little bit of a tangent here uh, you know you spoke about uh, kids learning coding and you know the um, language coding language you know you spoke about python yes. you know i mean that's an advanced level from what i understand mm. uh, i wanted to ask you are there any concerns among parents Hmm. you know that are are uh, maybe you know about safety of their children or what they're getting exposed to or what they might learn or maybe uh, whatever they learn could be put into a negative use do you get these concerns i think this is a great question because i have gotten this question every time i've done workshops so i recently was doing a workshop on chat gpt uh, for educators and then i also did it with some parents of the school so i got the question is in chat gpt a threat because chat gpt basically gives all the answers right. that children are expected to read and study and all of those things right isn't a big threat on you know privacy and all of those things so i said probably yes so i gave them an example you know so the other day out of curiosity i was just trying to see the limits of what chat gpt can answer right so i tried asking chat gpt how to learn black magic <laughs> okay like very random but i had seen some random movie so i was very curious that can chat gpt really teach me that and chat gpt denied the request okay it said that this is against our policies and we do not entertain such questions mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i tried circumventing the question in another way and i tried asking it still didn't answer right the other day the principal asked chat gpt that you know one of my team members is feeling feverish what should i give which medicine should i give So chat gpt said that hey i am not a doctor oh okay. and you know but if these are the symptoms that these are some medicines but please mm. consult a physician mm. however if i had asked google how should i learn black magic what do you think would be the answer oh wow that is interesting i mean it probably would have gave the answer like something yeah it would probably give me you know? hey this is step 1 <laughs> this is step 2 also with videos you know this right. is how you perform you know this and Yeah. So, what is a threat? Is Chat GPT a threat, or is Google a threat? Right. So, probably Google a threat, but we don't consider Google as a threat because we understand how it works, right. and parents understand how it works, and teachers understand how it works, and so it would never be labeled as a threat. But Chat GPT would, because until now, all parents and teachers don't know how the technology works. Awareness is critical for teachers as well as parents to understand such technologies. so that it ceases becoming a threat that's very well put dhruv thank you so much for that uh so moving forward i also wanted to know mm-hmm. about this whole um chat gpt angle okay. from a leader perspective okay. okay so obviously it's very important for today's leaders and everybody to know this of thing yes. that's there now chat gpt totally. right so are you sort of training uh, uh, them for that and are the trainings different from what you train to teachers and what you train to children see the fundamental of using that platform remains the same and i share that you know with the audience today i'll just share what the prompt formula should be like but the core here is that the case studies so every workshop that we do or every interaction that we do with teachers principals or parents uh the case studies are very different so um every time we take an example of how a parent should use chat gpt um so different examples are used for relating to a parent as compared right. to a teacher so teachers the examples are generally how to make a lesson plan how to create a story line how to create poems right uh, and such examples for parents the examples would be different but the foundational theory and the way to use the platform remains the same so maybe i'll just share it with you all right now um i'll just share the prompt formula so we were really wants to get started after this workshop immediately using the platform yeah that would uh, that be so nice they can just you know get started without thinking too much because that's one of the easiest platform to use so how do you start the link is chat.openai.com uh, uh, mm-hmm. so you just uh, 
go and visit that or on Google just write chat GPT and you open it so there are two versions right now 3.5 and 4 yeah 3.5 uh, has a free version which uh, you know you and I can use and be very happy with the results right. 4 has advanced version the speed is better and it also probably gives live results so the limitation of 3.5 free version right now is that all the data that there is is until September 21 September 2021 and you don't get any results after that date right. but chat GPT 4 is a little advanced and it also has extensions to get live results okay, okay so that's the major difference but 3.5 does work very well for almost all our requirements how to get started the way to write prompts so the entire game of AI is around writing the right prompts or asking the right questions so chat GPT would be the best intern the most learned person that you can interact with yeah. But you should be asking the right questions. How to ask the right questions? So five steps and if the, the audience should probably make note of it right away. First step is uh, to give a task okay. and give context. Okay. okay. For example, um, write a short play on Save the Earth. That's my task. Hmm. And the context is... Um, you are and assign a role. So that's also the first step. So you also assign a role. So you mentioned that you are a great content writer. Write a role on uh, save the earth. Okay. Okay. Second step is explain the task. So there you explain the task saying that um, this is performed by four fifth grader students hmm. in the school hmm. on the annual day. And uh, this is what the play looks like. It is the duration of the play. Then third is giving criteria that this should not be longer than 1000 words. It should have examples. Right. These are the names of the children. I would want this to be very, the tone should be very curious, enthusiastic, something like right. that. Fourth should be telling them commands, what you don't want. Or if there is anything additional that you want. For example, I would want a narrator to be guiding the entire sequence. Wow. Also share the scene sequences so where should the tree be placed where should the author be what right. where should the narrator be all of these things and last is refining the output so do not expect the first output be the best output so you have to keep refining until you get what you want right okay and so probably refining the output would be after i get the first output i say that also add a poem of eight lines right. on the same topic right. and it would refine the output and give me a beautiful poem too so that's the formula Wow. So basically, the better your prompt is, the better the output, right? Correct. I mean, so that's chat GPT for us. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's the core of uh, any platform that right. you use. Even if you're using it to create presentations, slides, videos, um, such answers, you can create books. Yeah. But the formula remains the same. So is there any other AI apart from chat GPT that you are including in your workshops? See, there are, for every requirement, there are multiple platforms. For example, Chat GPT is the best platform for text-based outcomes. Right. You know, so everything that we need to know information through text, we get it through Chat GPT. Of course, there is Google Bard, there is Bing, and these are great platforms and they are doing really well. But until now, I've felt that Chat GPT is the best with comes in terms of outcomes and customizations. Okay. Okay. So I recommend that to all my audience. Then suppose for creating presentations. So teachers have to create a lot of presentation day in, day out. Professionals right. have to create a lot of presentations. So multiple platforms. So there is one platform called tome.ai. T-O-M-E dot A-I. Okay. So that's for creating presentations. Okay. But I've figured out that there's one better platform called gamma.app. Okay. okay gamma.app does wonders with presentation. It really makes it very concise, good designs, and, you know, excellent framework. So right. then... Um, there are applications there is something called as magicschool.com okay dot AI sorry and that is wonderful for creating lesson plans uh, MCQs question papers a lot of generators AI generators for schools and for teachers using that platform so it's called magic school right so that was AI for us now I have this question in my mind about coding okay. so I mean, I don't really understand it. Would you want to give some basics of coding and, you know, some basic language, something about it? I mean, you know, this, I I, I did understand that you need to set a, set a code to get to the AI to make an AI, right? So what is this coding about? And how do a normal person like me go about it? Okay. So how should a normal person get started? Yeah. 
so what is coding so coding is just a language to disk you know speak with a computer right that is what it is you know uh, computer speaks in different languages for example there's arduino language which is generally okay. used for robotics uh, to code robots arduino is used then there's okay. python there's java uh, so java is used to code generally websites okay uh, so there is html html is to give websites a structure so that is where html is used and that is what we learn in schools as well now to get started um, there are so many applications so many free tools that you can get started with uh getting so there are two levels of getting started one is understanding and appreciating appreciating the mindset of how a coder should think okay and then learning the language okay so language would be maybe a python hmm. okay where you actually need to know how to really code and what works how which is intense hmm. now what is the objective of learning would be the requirement so the right. point so if you really want to create applications or something then you really need to deep dive into languages right of how it works but there are so many no code platforms right now that you first need to have a clarity of what right. should work how what is the framework that you want suppose you want to create a website first you need to really understand sit back and think it should have five pages every page so suppose it's the first home page home page should have three drop downs Okay. those drop downs first should be about us second should be maybe my team third should be my vision then on the second uh, tab maybe i would want my products and these are the products that i would want i would want it to see as a drop down and then there should be a slider on the first page and then i would want some blocks now these are this is the thought that you need to have before you really start creating something right. that is called a wireframe so you first create a wireframe of how you would want it to be then you partner with someone who's so there are two parts of coding one is design oh so you basically need a designer uh, who can give you the look and feel of what you want to create right. and then there is a coder okay. of who can actually code and make it happen hmm. so now it depends on where do you want to be so suppose you want to create a website for yourself so hmm. there are so many free website creating tools which have templates hmm. so there are designers who have created the templates and hmm. you can be the one who can just decide if i click this this should happen if i click here on submit the form should come to me on this email id and all those things so that is level 1 and level 2 would be to really learn and deep dive into the language or maybe learning a java or c++ or python right so that is how you get started that really answered my question <laughs> thank you so much dhru is there anything i missed out uh, that you want to talk about mm. no i think you've almost covered everything uh, i would just if there are there is audience who really want to get started right. uh, how to get started So, if it's a teacher or a parent or you know anyone who really wants to get started in this space, um, understanding the basic tools of normal productivity or daily tasks would be the starting point. For example, learning about Microsoft Excel, right? As basic as that, but that's the basic and the most beautiful step to start in this journey. Uh, like managing daily expenses, uh, working on a home loan kind of a projection. You need Excel and. excel works wonders creating project plans planning for the grocery to planning for mnc projects everything is done on excel so if you want to really get started get started with the basics of how excel works then there is a lot of automation that is done in excel so that can be the next level in terms of ai chat gpt is the best place to get started uh, if you are an artist and if you really have imaginations uh and you would want to put it in a picture or somewhere then mid journey is a beautiful tool then maybe learn about it so the core here is that to learn any new tool you would take a month right not more than a month so if you are really interested in doing something maybe creating music through ai creating pictures through ai productivity through ai then all that you need to invest is maybe you know 20 to 30 days in learning that tool and then using it uh efficiently is there anything else <laughs> So thank you so much for that. By the way, I mean now I feel all pumped because you know I know Excel, so I'm halfway oh. there already. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all Very right. Nice. So any closing statement that you want to make? No. Um. Uh, wonderful. I I think um the times have changed, and one of the things that always comes up in every interaction that I do is is AI going to kill creativity? Oh yeah. yeah. So is AI going to take away jobs? Is it going to take away creativity? is it going to replace humans is it going to replace teachers is it right going to replace teachers? that's going around yeah so the answer to this is basically no of course um, ai can't ai can teach children but of course teacher does an amazing job 
a human teacher does an amazing job at it but there is going to be a huge difference between teachers using ai and not using ai right. the efficiency the output you know the level at which they would be able to teach and create an impact would be way higher than those who are not using ai right. you know so for example quick example here so i was in one of the workshops in a school in malad and the teacher mentioned that you know i've been teaching since 12 years in you know primary grades and i've been teaching the same topic every year and i'm i've run out of topics to create new projects around it and these are the same projects i've been teaching every year you know i think it was around cell something cell respiration or cell biology and then she started using ai and she asked for you know how can i i think it was a water cycle that she wanted to okay. teach and it asked chat gpt you know are there in any innovative ideas to teach this same topic and she got a ton of ideas and she started implementing it so she she started using a spray in the class wow. to bring in water and all those things and she was so excited that you know this has brought in new energy so it has not killed creativity it has boosted creativity for her one thought a very deep thought here is um that can it replace humans so to replace or mimic humans first we need to understand how a human break, brain works the point is that no one really knows how the brain works so it's very difficult to mimic something that you don't even know how it works that's very well put so it's not possible that you know in the next few years that it will replace human brains because we don't know how human brains work so it's not going to happen but yeah people who use ai would significantly have a bigger impact and a larger impact yeah and basically what ai can do is you know it can boost creativity like you said it can give you tons of options it can give you you know many many ways but then the personal touch and how you deliver it yes it's solely a human thing right true true <laughs> i agree i think you understood this perfectly well purva thanks great thank you thank you so much for being here whatever you've shared today has made ai technology generally very simple okay. and the sort of examples that you've given like they were they were really easy and you know very uh, simple for a layman to understand as well thank you so much yeah thank you purva if you understood i think my mission is accomplished <laughs> and thank you for having me here